Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to this session. Uh, my name is Jason Mimic. I'm a technical director at MongoDB. And today, basically going to be talking about our first tile that runs on Pivotal Cloud Foundry that enables you to launch enterprise MongoDB clusters directly from Pivotal Cloud Foundry. And before I get into this, there's also some of my colleagues are here from MongoDB. We um, have been taking a lot of questions over in our booth that's in the corner there. So uh, please feel free to stop by. Um, OK. Uh, so this huge number, 163 zeta bytes, is how much data will basically be in the world in 2025. And there's like 16 of these things right now. So if, I don't know if anybody can imagine what that number actually looks like. So if you're an on-premise kind of a person, you might think of it like this. It's 40 trillion DVDs, which could go to and from the moon like 100 million times. Okay. Now, if you're more of a cloud-based person, you could think of it like Netflix. You'd have to watch all the movies on Netflix 500 million times. It's like crazy. Uh, big, which is a lot of the reason things are evolving in technology the way they are, right? To deal with this stuff. So you're probably all familiar with kind of the traditional big data marketing thing with the volume, velocity, and variety. Um, so we have that, but then you have all, all the enterprise uh, things and level of service that you're, you're used to providing, right? You have to do things faster and faster and faster, and you have to deal with real-time data and reliable performance, all of these things. Um, so that's kind of the space we're in, and, and how does MongoDB fit into that and databases in general? Well, pretty much all databases and the big ones that have been around for a while all focus on a lot of those enterprise level things, right? You need flexibility, scalability, uh, high availability, always on, all that stuff. So how is Mongo different? I know in one of the keynotes, I think it was yesterday, there was a guy talking about NoSQL and then like no NoSQL and not only SQL and all that stuff. Um, and so MongoDB was, um, MongoDB was very traditionally this NoSQL database. Um, but it's actually pretty different than that because it's a general purpose database. Because we have all that stuff that the traditional ones have, plus we have other things because we kind of do it differently. Right? We have this really flexible JSON uh, format for storing the data you know, arbitrary keys and values, you have a lot of flexibility there. Um, we have a great query language with that, indexes, all this kind of stuff. And now we have lots of really great enterprise level tools and management suites to help you do things like you've been used to with possibly some other databases that have been around a lot longer. Um, and these are, this is just a sample of some of the companies using MongoDB, uh, a small one. And if you look at the use cases, it's like anything. It's not just like new web app, Twitter kind of app that uses MongoDB. It's like everything, everything out there. Um, so why am I telling you kind of all this stuff? I'm not talking about Pivotal or anything like that, anything about a tile. So the reason is kind of the motivation for why we even built the tile. So a lot of these customers on here, for example, uh, The Gap, Bosch, um, T-Mobile, to name a couple, they're like customers of Pivotal and customers of MongoDB, right? So it really makes sense for us to make it easier to combine and use both those products. Um, and so that's a lot of the motivation for the tile. Um, does anybody here, how many MongoDB customers are here right now? Good. And how many 
use Mongo and Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Okay, does anybody run MongoDB on Pivotal Cloud Foundry? Ooh, we have two, three, that's good. Um, all right, good, so, so there's a few, and that's gonna keep growing. A lot of customers are in various stages. We have a lot of, a lot of them that are sort of starting off, and some of them that are more advanced. Um, and so that was a lot of the motivation. Um, one of the things, too, uh, that is important about MongoDB, especially on Pivotal Cloud Foundry, is it kind of needs to, to service like multiple personas at the same time and in, in, and in a lot of different ways. So you have the developers that now they just want to go in and click a couple buttons and get a, and get a cluster so they can do some development. And you don't want to have to be bothered with tickets or waiting for it or anything like that. So they need a view of the world in, in Cloud Foundry that lets them do that. Whereas the operator wants to do kind of everything the same way and then apply all the best you know, practices and security and logging restriction, all that kind of stuff so it's uniform across the whole thing. So um, about the kind of uh, an important part of this is it's, it's not necessarily trivial to build a tile because you can think about what the tile does but it's really important to think about like the people using it and, and what they do. Um, okay. So before I get into kind of what our tile is and, and what it does, um, I'll tell you a little bit about sort of where it is in its evolution. So this is our first tile. It has recently come out um, and it allows you to essentially provision a standalone node, a replica set, or a sharded cluster directly from Cloud Foundry. And the way it works is it actually integrates with MongoDB Ops Manager, which has been very confusing this week because there's also Pivotal Cloud Foundry Ops Manager, so we have to say the long names so everybody knows what we're talking about. Um, and, and the reason it does that is because Ops Manager, MongoDB Ops Manager, that I'm gonna show you in a little bit, ha is that enterprise level monitoring management um, and automation tool for MongoDB. And it has everything in it, right? And so we don't wanna have to rebuild all that over in Cloud Foundry. We want you to like leverage that. And then back to the personas thing, Sometimes the only people that are really interested in the, the say, the, the more detailed features in that, they're like the DBAs and maybe the devs and maybe the operations people, they don't really care about the indexes on the data. So uh, th some people can go into MongoDB Ops Manager to see that stuff directly. Um, and underneath the, underneath the covers, it's a, it's a Bosch service broker. Um, that provisions, installs an automation agent, which then talks to MongoDB Ops Manager, and then it uses a REST API on MongoDB Ops Manager to actually install MongoDB on the nodes that um, the service broker brings up. Okay, so now a little bit of, of a demo of what I've been talking about. Okay. So first, and before we go here, let me... I forgot to get this tab set up. I wanna go into the... Um, Cloud Foundry Ops Manager here. Oh, good. Warning, everyone knows the, the network here has been like up and down crazy, so we have a backup if we need. Um, 
All right, so, so this is the tile right here, and it essentially has not much configuration. That's probably really small for you guys. A little bit better. So this is how you basically configure the tile to connect to MongoDB Ops Manager. You put a URL for where Ops Manager is deployed, and then a set of credentials to basically enable using that REST API that I was talking about. Um, and then right now, um, so in this version, um, you have to select one particular instance type here. And all the deployments that you create with the tile are gonna use that instance size. This is an area that's going to get more features. Um, for example, the ability to select the instance type when you're actually creating the service um, for MongoDB, um, as well as we're considering some um, additional features that will actually allow you to kind of map some of the um, access that you set up in Cloud Foundry. For example, users in a particular space can only choose a certain instance types. And the scenario there is like you want to set up a space for your devs and they can only pick, you know, like T2 micro because you don't want them spinning up anything bigger. But then for your production and other or test environments, you want, obviously want other instance types available. Um, so that'll be coming. And I'll talk about the release cycle of the tile in a little bit as well. Um, so you... And how it got here, you just download it and install it like any other tile. And then, once you're over here, I'll go to one I already have set up. Um, you'll see, uh, sorry. Um, that it's a replica set. So again, there's, not a, this is not that interesting. <laughs> I guess there's not a lot there, it just says replica set. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna demo and create one um, just to show you kind of how, how simple it is uh, right now. Um, and then before I do that though, let me jump over here and just show you um, Ops Manager. And this happens to be a, a different replica set, but so the replica set that gets launched from Cloud Foundry will then surface over here, um, and you'll be able to do all kinds of things like um, look at metrics and look at um, some real-time data, uh, all kinds of stuff, analyze the indexes and, and things like that. Okay. So... All right. So what I want to do is um, show an, an, like an end-to-end -end thing where I'm going like, to create a space, launch a replica set, and then push an app, and then bind it. And if all that works, we'll have a little app we can click on and put some data in, and then it should show up in MongoDB Ops Manager. So, okay. So that created a space. This uses it. Oops. Right. Nobody saw that I typed CD. Okay. Uh, I know, I'm typing too much. All right, so we don't have anything there. Um, so how do you create the service? Uh, CF create service, mongodb.com. 
ODB. Um, so that's the name that comes um, it showed up here somewhere. That's the internal name that you have to use on the command line for the tile. Um, then I can say replica set. And just give it a name. And then this, by default, will create a three-node replica set. I'm going to show you an example of a sharded cluster in a sec. And you can pass more parameters by appending the config with a little JSON document right in there. All right. So that takes a second. So let's do the sharded cluster. Um, dot ODB. Oops. Um, and okay, so this is where we can specify some other parameters. So I can do the version that I want to control. So over in MongoDB Ops Manager, Uh, where's that one? Um, there's this notion of a version manager. And um, in here, you can select which versions of MongoDB you want to be available for people to deploy from this MongoDB Ops Manager. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of enterprises that use this, they have, these, uh, they have this running on a server that doesn't have access to the internet, and so makes it a little more complicated. So somebody has to like, download the releases and put them somewhere, and then they become available to select over here. Um, and then we can say the number of shards is three replicas. Three. So each shard is itself a three node replica set. And does everybody know what I mean when I say shard and replica set, more or less? Okay, good. Um, and then we need these config servers. So these are three more sort of lighter weight nodes that hold all the metadata for the sharding. So they know which ranges of the shard key are on which shard. And then you need some Mongo S's. And those are the guys that applications actually connect to. And they are aware of that um, shard metadata. So they can route your operation to the right shard. Or your wrong operation to all the shards. And that should, good. We would have got an error sooner. Um, OK, so now if I go back here, um, I think I click here, and there's my, all right, good. So now I have my two services there, and then I think what I'll do is I'll push the app, and then we'll go over to MongoDB Apps Manager. So I just, there's this Spring Music demo app. I'm not a Spring expert, so this is, to me, this is the hello world for Spring. Um, OK, so that, that takes a second. So while that's going, let's go back over here and try to find what got created. So in MongoDB Ops Manager, we have this notion of uh, there's some levels of organization for how all the deployments kind of surface. So 
If you're familiar with MongoDB Ops Manager, we each just have groups. In each instance of Ops, MongoDB Ops Manager could have multiple groups. And within each group, you could have as many deployments as you wanted. With 3.6 Ops Manager that just came out, um, the concept of orgs, which has already existed in Cloud Manager and in Atlas, is now in Op MongoDB Ops Manager. And an organization is a higher level um, sort of construct that can hold multiple projects. And a project is basically what a group used to be. Uh, and we also have the concept of a team. And so within an, uh, an org, you can give a team access to different projects. So it's a lot more flexibility to kind of control who's, ac ac who's accessing what. Um, so if you look at this, I think right now, it's not perfect. So in our first version of the tile, unfortunately it creates a project with a name that doesn't mean anything relevant. Um, but this will change in, in a release in about a month um, to map actually the space, um, space organization in space and Pivotal Cloud Foundry to organization in space in MongoDB Ops Manager. So it makes a lot more sense. Um, okay. So here, this is the one that just got created, I believe. Yeah, 1543. Yeah, there we go. That's the, it is 1543. So that's the primary that, that just got created. Those are the three nodes. Okay. Now, um, get rid of that. Now, if I refresh this, should I have our, oh, I knew this was gonna happen. Sorry, I closed the, and then it should be, All right, good. So here's the app, the Spring Music we just pushed up, and then we have the two clusters, um, but we don't have it bound yet, so I think if I click on this and, yeah, I gotta go do this. Um, and I'll do it to the replica set. Okay, and then, I'm not positive if you're supposed to restart an app when you bind it. I have had to for me. So, um, so we let that restart for a second and then we should be able to put some, some data in and go look at it. All right, so that's good. And then this is our route. Which I don't have any of the SSL set up for. Okay. So, except I didn't really do anything yet. <laughs> well, are they? Um, this takes a second too. Yes, they are. Okay, good. Yep, so those are really there. And then if I go here and actually add something, this and go here, should be able to do, try to make this so you can see it. Um, if anybody knows about uh, MongoDB Compass, which that is like a, um, a GUI tool that you can install that allows you to look at your data and you can get some performance metrics and stuff, um, kind of our, it's not really an IDE, but it's kind of like that. Um, a lot of the stuff that was in there that allows you to do queries and stuff is kind of getting surfaced over in 
MongoDB Ops Manager, and it's in MongoDB Atlas, which is fully hosted, and in Cloud Manager. So it's kind of the same experience all over the place. Um, but if we go here and just do title, and that's the one we just added directly from over here. So, um, good. I think that's it for the demo. Okay, so getting to the end, summarizing a little bit here. Um, so some of the advantages of this um, are obviously now it's exposed in Pivotal Cloud Foundry and you can bind the apps and, and do all this stuff um, and, and start to you know, apply your organization's kind of practices around how you do things with Pivotal Cloud Foundry actually to your MongoDB deployments. Um, I think you'll probably walk away from this saying, okay, that was pretty basic what I saw, um, and, and it was, uh, but that's gonna be getting better. So um, we're moving to like a, a monthly release cycle of our tile, and we're working with customers that are like actively using it to kind of help drive the features that go into it. Um, so like cleaning up the group names and, and that kind of stuff will, will be out pretty, pretty soon here. Um, great, so if not anybody have any questions? Yes. You're not the only one to ask that this week. Um, and there, isn't a way to do it right now, um, but it is on our list to figure out the right way to do it. Um, because it seems to me the most of the people that are asking for that want to do, they want to have like a primary data center and then a DR data center, and they want like the same stuff set up in both. Um, and so if you take that problem sort of out of the Pivotal Cloud Foundry realm, it's a very common problem people have with MongoDB, and the way you get around that is you make a replica set and put nodes in one and nodes in another, so that when one data center goes down, the other ones can um, take over. But you can't do that right now. Um, with, from what I understand, you can't really deploy anything across foundries. Um, so uh, we're we're looking at ways we can support that kind of DR uh, scenario. Is that what you're ask why you're asking about it? Yeah. Yep. Um, so yes and yes. And the reason I could say that is um, a couple of things. So it has the label beta on it still in the marketplace. It causes a lot of issues. Um, that's gonna go away soon, but from the MongoDB company side, our support team is trained on it and it is fully supported. Um, our, like, if you have uh, one of our CE consultant engineers come and work with you, they know about it. Um, so it's fully supported there. We, so for example, the, the name thing. We're gonna get another release out that kinda makes it a little prettier. Um, and then that, that tag's gonna go off the, the thing, yeah. Uh, one other thing, are you guys creating a tile for the Mongo Ops Manager at all? That yeah, that's a good question. So I, I guess I really didn't talk about that. So work had to happen before I did this, right, because Installing the tile is easy, but somebody had to go and set up MongoDB Ops Manager, which isn't hard, but it's, you gotta do some stuff. Um, I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna do there. Um, possibly, that's, that's one option. We know we need to get something to, to make that a little bit simpler. Um, so possibly we'll do something like that. Um, another like lightweight thing is 
uh, the ability to use Cloud Manager with this. So, like, so Cloud Manager is, is MongoDB Ops Manager that is just hosted for you. So it's kind of hosting your management and monitoring stuff, but it can still talk to MongoDB clusters anywhere in the world. That doesn't matter. Um, so that, that's, that's one other kind of option we're, we're considering. Uh, well, the way that uh, MongoDB Ops Manager gets information from the like replica sets it monitors is doesn't require firewall. It doesn't reach in. It's the agents that go over HTTP out, so you don't have to worry about that. Any other questions? Comments? Concerns? Yes. So Jason, how do you how do you scale uh, scale up if you start with service plan and the yep. certified and migrate all the data off and then back in? Okay. So we don't have a way to do it directly in with the tile right now. Um, but we will. And the way you'll do it is the way people do it outside of, of Cloud Foundry. And the way and for example, with Atlas you can do that. You can just say, I want bigger servers, and it just happens automatically for you. And the way that happens is, again, through the, the beauty of a replica set, because we can just add a node with the bigger instance, add them and add them, and sort of bring these down, and then eventually you have enough up at the higher level. So, um, and that's what you can do with MongoDB Ops Manager as well. Uh, so we're going to take that and then... Uh, basically automate it and put that functionality into the tile in an upcoming release. But otherwise, yes, you would. And one way to do it today, if you don't want to wait for the tile to be able to do it, um, is there is another tool called Mongo Mirror, which originally came to allow people, like, let's say you're on-prem and now you want to go up into the cloud on MongoDB Atlas. How do I get my data up there? So Mongo, Mongo Mirror is a tool that you can basically give it a source and a destination replica set, and it'll synchronize the two and kind of keep them synchronized. It uses the op log and all that stuff. Um, and then you can just do a cutover. So you could use that today, and you could just have one replica set in Foundry, bring up another one, and then run Mongo between the two. Mongo Mirror between the two. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, which is going to, we will have a release soon that allows you to specify the instance size when you do CF create. Okay. okay. Because right now you can't, it's not exposed in that tool. And that's what I was saying right now in the, in the config here. You have to, um, like, you pick it here. <laughs> and then it just applies. So that's how it works now. Um, but that'll get better. Um, no, it can connect to any replica set. Yeah, we can talk about it after. I mean, you, you could, but... I'm not sure if I would like run it forever. It's not really what it was intended for. It's kind of more of a utility. Yeah, time. Thank you. I guess we're out of time. If you have anything else, come on up. Thank you very much for coming. Enjoy the rest of everything and safe travels home if you're leaving. Thanks.